I love this theme of honoring life. Life in any stage is never a burden and never a problem. Understanding our position on life is this. Life is never a problem, or any life is never a problem. Every life is sacred and good and holy and to be honored. I love that, just I like this, the theme to honor life. It gives a sense of, it reminds us that life is not just to be respected, but honored, reverenced. It reminds me of Psalm 139, which you probably know well, even if you don't know the number, but that is the one that says, God, in my mother's womb, you created me and fashioned me in secret. I am wonderfully and fearfully made. I love that. The Dicastery for the Doctrine of the Faith in Rome released a document just a few days ago on human dignity called Dignitas Infinita, Infinite Dignity. It is a sweeping document that reiterates the Church teaching that all life is sacred, and thus we cannot destroy life or change it or bring harm to ourselves or others. It counters the false notion that we think we can do anything we want with our life, with our bodies, or with the life or bodies of others. Not only does it mention, of course, violations against life, like abortion, gender theory, surrogacy, and violence directed toward others, but also poverty and war and online violence and other sinful structures. The sacrament of the sick the anointing of the sick, is the means by which God brings health of mind, body, and soul to the sick and the infirmed in our midst. This sacrament comes right out of the Bible, word for word. In fact, it's part of the rite. I always read it to the patient or the person who's going to be anointed. This is from the book of James, the letter of James. Are there any who are sick among you? Then send for the priests of the church, and let the priests anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick persons, and the Lord will raise them up. And if they have committed any sins, their sins will be forgiven. Word for word out of the letter of James. That's exactly what we do. You call the priests, or you should call for the priests of the church. We come, we should come right away. To, especially if it's an emergency, to anoint the person with oil. And we believe that God will bring healing, certainly bring forgiveness for their sins to them. The sacrament shows God's compassion and concern for us. The priests, the ministers of this sacrament, are extensions of Jesus Christ at that point. True, for some of, uh, for, for priests, it's not always convenient. It seems that a lot of times that these calls come in the middle of the night. Um, and, you know, it's, as I said, maybe not convenient, but I tell the priests and I remind myself that no matter when it comes, we should rush to the hospital or hospice or that person's home. I, I don't like it when I hear people say, I just, I didn't call you because I know you're so busy. Ah, but that's what we should be busy doing. It doesn't matter what else we're doing, except if we're presiding at Mass. We can't really leave Mass to do that, but nonetheless, we should rush to the person's side to, to anoint a person, especially if it's an emergency. And for your part, I would just ask that if you wish to be anointed or have a relative or friend who, whom you think should be anointed, then please let us know as soon as possible. A lot of people want to wait until the last minute when they're just actively dying, and then they try to call for a priest. But it's okay to call any time, you know, if, you, if someone needs that. So please do that. How is the sacrament celebrated then? As with all sacraments, the person who receives it ought to be well disposed and open to receiving the graces that they will get in the sacrament. So a good examination of conscience, kind of just preparing their hearts to receive this great gift from God. Um, often with the sacrament, if possible and desired, uh, confession can be part of this rite or can precede it. So you can ask if you could celebrate the sacrament of reconciliation at that time. And then the anointing. We take the oil of the sick that was just blessed right before Easter and we'll anoint the forehead and the hands of the person 
who is to be anointed. And if death appears to be imminent, then the priest can pray the apostolic pardon over them, which is a very powerful prayer. There are two options for that prayer because most people don't often hear it or know about it. Here's what they are. And I'm just reading them. They don't count for you, okay? Um, not right now, anyway. Through the holy mysteries of our redemption, may Almighty God release you from all punishments in this life and in the life to come. May he open to you the gates of paradise and welcome you to everlasting joy. <sighs> Can you imagine hearing that at the end of your life? Another option is this. By the authority which the apostolic see has given me, I grant you a full pardon and the remission of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. This is God's compassion given to all of us, especially at the end of our life. This sacrament is repeatable, like the Eucharist and reconciliation, as one could get worse in their illness or sickness and need the anointing again, or simply, um, or simply needs that grace in the midst of the same sickness and illness. And it's not just for people with physical illness, it's also appropriate before a surgery or a major procedure, or even for someone experiencing mental illness as well. Clearly, God desires our good, the ultimate good. Our God does not abandon us when we are sick. On the contrary, that's when he, like the good Samaritan, gives us even more attention. May God bless all of us and make us well, body, mind, and soul. And when we are not, may God direct and dispose us for to the sacraments, to receive the sacraments, especially the sacraments of reconciliation and the Eucharist and the anointing of the sick. Let us continue to pray for all who are sick or who are dying, those who are suffering, those who are undergoing so many of the violations against life that we read about and, and see and witness every day. Let us pray for them that God will be with them in their time of need and also that God will move us to assist them, to comfort them, to care for them, and if it is God's will, to help them to be made well again. Let us take some time now before Mass, before benediction, to pray for all who are sick.